V-I-C-K-S. Vic presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory in Hold Back the Dawn. Here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vapor Rub. Ladies and gentlemen, today from the stage of the Matinee Theater, Vicks presents Paramount Pictures' exciting romantic drama... Hold Back the Dawn, which starred Charles Boyer and Olivia de Havilland. The curtain rises on the hero of our story. My name is George Iscovescu. I was... Five to eight years. Five to eight. It was a prison sentence. I, who had lived most of my years at, at the Ritz and the Savoy, registered at the Esperanza. Rates a dollar a day, cheaper by the year. After I got settled, I went over to the bar across the street. I hadn't been sitting there more than a few minutes when I met an old friend. My former dancing partner, Tamara. Well, Tamara. How wonderful to see you again. And still as handsome as ever. <laughs> Tamara, well, what are you doing down here? Oh, I came down for a day from Los Angeles with some people. Those drunks at the next table. Oh. That is not the same. Tamara, George. I was the hotel. Ah. I served a little time there, too. But not long. Not this baby. I was in in four weeks. Four weeks? How did you ever manage that? The simplest way in the world. I married an American. Your papers go to Washington, and in four weeks, everything is settled. They let you in. Oh, of course, you have to wait three years before you are a citizen. <laughs> By the way, George, if you are interested, I have been divorced for some time now. Yeah. I'm staying at the hotel for the weekend. I'll see you around. So it was as easy as that. Just marry an American and swing right over the fence. The town was full of them, gay, light-hearted people on a holiday. I had only to travel across the street from the hotel to the garage to find my American, Emmy Brown. She was standing in a doorway, perilously close to tears, arguing with two mechanics. But can't you give me some idea of how much longer it'll take you to fix it? Pues verá usted, señorita, todavía tenemos que sondar los tubos del radiador y ponerlo de vuelta. I can't understand a word you're saying. You promised the car would be ready by three o'clock. Por favor, señorita, cállese, que nos pone nerviosos. What did you say? He, uh, he says you are only making them nervous. Oh, well, I don't know what to do. Uh, can I be of some service? No, no, there's nothing you can do, thank you. You see, I brought the children down here to show them a fiesta in Mexico, and the car broke down, uh, and I... Your children? Uh, no, my no. class. I've left them in the garage office with one of the older students. You see, I'm a school teacher. Oh. And if we're not back by 9 o'clock tonight, Mr. McAdams, the principal, think we're all dead in a ditch. Well, while you're waiting for the car, why not come across the street to the hotel and telephone and tell him you're all right? Yes, I uh, suppose that would be the thing to do. Well, may I show you? Thank you. It's very kind of you. We went over to the hotel. We sat in the lobby, waiting for her call to go through. Uh, cigarette, Miss Brown? No, no, oh. thank you. The school board doesn't approve. Oh. 
And to tell you the truth, I don't like cigarettes very much. Oh, yes, yes, I see. What's the... Ma- You're staring at me, Mr. Riscovescu. Forgive me, but it's hard not to stare at anyone so... so lovely. Well, I'm sure that's very nice of you. Mr. Riscovescu, we have the young lady's call now. Oh, good. Thank you so much. I'll come at once. The mechanics decided they could not repair the car until morning, and a $5 bill that I had invested helped them to decide it. There were no rooms available in the hotel, but I persuaded the manager to make beds for Miss Brown and the children on the couches in the lobby. She had a hard time going to sleep that night, little Miss Brown. Her heart was beating fast, and her neat, tidy senses were all thrown out of gear. She found a kind of half-sleep at last, and then about five o'clock in the morning... She awoke and saw me sitting in a chair halfway across the lobby, watching her. Mr. Iscovescu, what are you doing here? You'll wake the children. Oh, please, you have no right to be here. Of course I have no right. No right to sit here watching your face, learning it like a poem. No right at all to tell you I'm in love with you. You must go away right now, please. Miss Brown... We're like two trains halted for a moment at the same station, but going in different directions. We can't change our course any more than we can... any more than we can hold back the dawn. Look, it's growing light already. Everyone will be stirring soon, and you will be gone from me forever. Please don't touch me. You are very conscientious, Miss Brown. No infringement of the regulations for you. No rebellions nor violent desires. Not for you, the sudden flash which lights up your whole life. Oh, my dear. It is not this kiss I want. It's all your kisses. It's all your life. Look at your hand, Miss Brown. No, no, no. Your left hand. Why, it's a ring. A wedding ring. But how... Yes, it's a wedding ring, Miss Brown. I put it on your hand as you slept. It was... My mother's. Now you see how wild a dream can be. You are wise and sane and cool. But you will let me kiss you just once. Yes. Just once. Ah. You're so sweet. So lovely. Goodbye, Miss Brown. No. Oh, no. No, don't go. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. Please wait. I... Please don't walk so fast. I'm sorry. Thank you. That's better. Uh, uh, about your being lonesome. Yes? Other people are lonesome. So lonesome they almost give up waiting. Mr. McAdams always said I was crazy, but I knew all the time, deep down in my heart, that someday, somebody, somehow would come along, even though Azusa, California, was at the other end of the world. Let me tell you, let me try to explain how I feel. We had to get the Mexican judge out of bed. The license was five dollars. It seemed a sound investment. The ceremony was brief, the office drab and sordid, but but to Emmy Brown, being there was like standing at an altar in a cathedral with great bells ringing. She was radiant when we came out, arm in arm. I always expected to be married in the Margaret Martin Memorial Church in Azusa. In uh, Azusa? Uh-huh, I never dreamed of anything so beautiful and exciting as this. It's... Oh, George, please don't walk so fast. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting how little you are. My, they'll be surprised back home. Mrs. George Savescu. You know, I don't even know what you are. Doctor, lawyer, merchant, chief. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. <laughs> oh, George. I wish I didn't have to take the children back this morning. It's awful to have to leave you, George. Well, in four or five weeks, my papers will be straightened out, and I'll be able to join you. In Azusa. Yes, in Azusa. (laughs) You won't be so lonesome now, will you? No. I won't either. I have your ring and your name and your love. Oh, 
look. There's the station wagon. The children are already in it. I must go as yours. I'll take you to the car. No, no, please. It'll be easier to go if you don't. You stay here. Uh, George. Huh? I don't exactly know how to say it, but this is like the beginning of the world to me. I hope I can make you happy. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, darling. Well, it's yours, eh? You got married. Is that the bride getting into the station wagon? Yes, Tamara. She's going back to Azusa. Azusa, California. She's a school teacher there. A school teacher? Yes. Well, she ought to be easy to shake off. Tell her of a love that was too great to last. A mistake that was too lovely not to have been made. That she was too good and you too low. You know, those words almost have a ring of truth. A mistake too lovely, a girl too good. George, what's happening to you? kissing her, kissing her was like kissing wet snow. You couldn't be in love with a school teacher from Azusa. If you don't fall in love, George, that's not the role you play. I haven't said I'm in love. You haven't said you're not? No, Tamara. I haven't said I'm not. But better not make any plans, Tamara. Better not make... Any plans? In just a moment, Act Two of Hold Back the Dawn, starring Victor Jory. Every mother knows how hard it is these blustery days to keep children from catching cold. But fortunately, most mothers have given a lot of thought to the problem. And the modern way they use to relieve miseries of children's colds is to rub Vicks VapoRub on throat, chest, and back. These millions of thankful mothers have found that the moment you rub on VapoRub, its relief-giving action starts right to work. It helps relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, the coughing spasms, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. And results are so satisfying because VapoRub penetrates. Penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special, soothing, medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates. Stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. And this penetrating, stimulating action of VapoRub keeps on working for hours to bring such grand relief. Mind you, only VapoRub gives you this special, penetrating, stimulating action. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. And now from the stage of Vicks Matinee Theater, the second act of Hold Back the Dawn, starring Victor Jory. It's about a week later. George Iscovescu and Tamara are at a small table in the bar. When a man comes up and joins them, the man's name is Hammock. He's a member of the immigration department. Well, 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 Mrs. Shaughnessy. How's your husband? I, uh, I don't exactly know, Mr. Hammock. Oh, we are divorced about a year now. No, not really. You mean it's gone, that beautiful love match? Oh, I really loved him then. Sure. Only once he got you across the border, you found you didn't like the shape of his nose. Now, see here, Mr. Hammock, I'm I... not saying anything, Mrs. Shaughnessy. You made the grade. In is in. Only there's been an awful epidemic of marrying up and down the border. We finally got our eyes open. No kidding anymore. The department has a new theme song. Is it love or is it immigration? While I was sitting there listening to Hammock and Tamara, I'd seen the Azusa school wagon drive up in front of the hotel and a small figure dart up the steps. I was suddenly in a panic that Mr. Hammock might see her and start asking questions. I followed her up to the room, and when I got there, I... I didn't know what to say to her. I could not believe that I was falling in love, and yet my heart was pounding like a schoolboy's. Yours, darling. Isn't it wonderful? Mr. McAdams got a substitute teacher from Riverside. He gave me a week off and said I could use the car. Isn't that exciting, George? Exciting, I should say so. Now, come on. Let's find a road and follow it wherever it leads. 
to a lake or a palace or a fishing village. Let's spend these few days they've given you recklessly, gloriously. Oh, George, I love you. It's starting to rain. And I love the rain. So do I. Come on, we'll start right now. I thought I'd take her to Ensenada, a matter of 50 miles. Four hours, I figured it, but in the night and the storm, I must have taken a wrong turn. Ah, yes, a wrong turn in more than one way. I never did find Ensenada, and I never did find my way back to the road I had planned for my own life. We rode on through the wind and the rain, safe, warm, and happy. George, did you ever notice how things talk sometimes? Listen to those windshield wipers. They're saying together, together, together. Can't you hear it? Together, together. Ah, uh, yes, I've been listening to it for hours. Oh, Amy, I love you. I love you in a way I never thought I could love anyone. I want to laugh with you and cry with you. I want to take care of you. I want to dream with you and plan with you, and I want to stay with you forever. This is the beginning of a whole new life for you and me, Amy. And oh, I hope I can make you happy. I hope I can be worthy of you, darling. George, if you're going to kiss me, I think you'd better stop the car. Then I think I'd better stop the car right now. Darling. Oh, darling. We spent six days in heaven. We drove to a small village called Kaloya. They were having a bridal festival. And outside the small country church, there was an olive tree. And there was a legend that said, if a married couple shook it, however many olives fell, that is how many children they would have. Well, of course, we had to try it. (laughs) Shake hard, George. Shake hard. (laughs) There. There you are. One... Two, oh. three. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. I hope all three of them look just like you. Oh. oh, George, won't it be wonderful? The next day, the next day we drove to Tabotoyo and down to San Miguel. The third day we started back along the Gulf. We didn't return into the hotel until the last hour of the last day. You... You couldn't make a mistake and think it's tomorrow that you're due back in Azusa, could you? I'm afraid not, darling. July 13th, parent-teachers meeting, auditorium, 8 o'clock. Parent-teachers meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds very dull. <laughs> How long will it take you to drive there? Five hours. Five hours. Why don't you go up to your room and freshen up? I'll, I'll take the car over to the garage and get the gas tank filled. All right, darling. If only fate or God had warned me, things might have been so different. If, if I had only gone upstairs with her, if, 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 how often our lives hang upon an if. Mrs. Escovesco? Yes? I am Tamara, a friend of your husband, George. This thing of mine I want you to give me back. Of yours? My wedding ring. What would I be doing with your wedding ring? Wearing it. I loaned it to Georges. This? It belonged to his mother. Oh, isn't he wonderful? The way he knows how to pluck at the heartstring. Listen, sister. Georges married you to pass through that gate. For the same reason I married my American. With the same ring. But don't stare at me. Take a look at the engraving inside. Two toots for heaps. Just slip it off. No. Maybe you should know a little more about the history of Georges Cavesco. Get out. Please. Please. I know what you're thinking. I'm dirt. Well, so is he. We belong together. And you? You think you are a teacher. You're a schoolgirl who learned life out of a school book. Well, you'd have learned this lesson in six weeks or in six months. I'm telling it to you in six minutes. Get away. Get in that car and don't turn back. Yes? Senora Escovescu, 
Hey, Senor Hammock is waiting to see you in the lobby. Who? He's from the immigration department. Don't go. Don't see him. I'll be right down, Flores. Take my bag, please. Please, senorita. You can't give him away. What for? It won't do you any good. I learned life from a school book. Remember? Emmy, I... Not I... a word out of your Iscovescu. Now, Mrs. Iscovescu, I want it understood. I have no right to bother you with any questions down here in Mexico. It's just that if we think an American might be getting a dirty deal, we... I'll answer to... any questions. How long had you known Mr. Iscovescu when you married him? A few hours. Had you any idea he was waiting to get into the States? Yes. And that he might have married you to turn the trick? He might, but it isn't likely. You see... I asked him to marry me. There's nothing wrong, Mr. Hammock. George told me all about his past. There weren't any false pretenses. We love each other very much. Okay, Mrs. Escovescu. Have it your own way. Maybe I'm just dumb. See you later. Tamara talked to you. Yes. And I've always been so full of words, you know. Big ones, smooth ones, fancy ones. But I don't seem to have any just now. I, I don't know what to say except thanks. It's yours. I come from a small town. We don't have fine hotels. We eat in a drugstore. But we leave a tip just the same. I don't feel I was too generous for these seven days. Goodbye, George. Emmy, don't go. There's a lot I must say to you. The only thing for you to say is goodbye. <laughs> I stood there over an hour, watching that door she'd walked out of, watching that street that she'd driven down and away. And suddenly my, my hands began to grow cold with fear. Do you know that feeling when a premonition breaks over you like a black wave? And in my ears was the sound of, of tires taking a wild curve. Before my eyes was her foot on the gas pedal, pressing it down. I heard the screech... The screech of brakes and the crash. I swear I heard it. And I heard the whine of the sirens. And when the phone rang, I knew what the message would be. I knew. Senor Escovesco. Oh, Dios mío. Dios mío. What happened to her? What's happened? An accident. A bad accident. Where are they taking her? Where are they taking her? The Los Angeles receiving hospital. I'll take your car, Flores. They won't let you across the border. You have no passport. I'll get across the border. Give me your, your car keys. If you crash the border, they will catch you, and they will ne never let you in again. Never. Give me the keys! All right, senor. All right. I drove through that gate without stopping. I heard the shouts. I knew they would follow me, but I didn't stop. I drove with the pedal right down to the floor. And when I got to the hospital, the doctor was with her. How is she, doctor? She's unconscious. The steering wheel was crushed against her. There doesn't seem to be any fight left in her. Hurts her to breathe. Emmy. 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 It's yours. I'm here. I'm here, Emmy. It's yours. George. Go on. Keep talking. Go on. Try to breathe, Emmy. Yes, try. Try hard. That's it. Again. Now again. It's all right, Emmy. You remember the rain beating down on the windshield that night and the wiper going and the word it spoke. Together. 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 Breathe, Emmy. Together. Emmy, we're together. Together. George. George. I don't know how long I sat there, but I must have said it a million times. Together. Breathe. Together. Breathe. And at last, the doctor said... She's asleep now. She's going to be all right. I think you saved her life, Mr. Escobesco. I love her. Oh, how I love her. Mm -hmm. 
I left Emmy then. I went back across the border. What else was there for me to do? Emmy had no further use for me. She'd made that very clear. And her country had no use for me. And I hadn't very much use for myself. It must have been about a month later that Mr. Hammock came to me in the park. I had been expecting something from him because he knew I'd crashed across the border. And I was sitting on the park bench, tracing letters in the gravel with my cane. Hello, Mr. Escovescu. Hello, Mr. Hammock. What are you doing? Writing letters? No. Advertisements. Slightly reformed character, eager for some decent work. Any place on the globe will have him. Oh, I see. Well, in answer to your ad, we herewith inform you that we've made an opening for you right there, over that border. Huh? A certain immigration inspector, who shall for the moment be nameless, neglected to report a certain incident about a man crashing the border. And there's no use shooting your mouth off about it once you get in there. Get in? In where? In the United States. United? There's somebody waiting for you. See, right over there at that gate. She has all your papers. My papers? Why, it's... Emmy! You're the husband of an American wife, aren't you? Go on, don't keep her waiting. Emmy! And say... What was this she was telling me all the way down about the two of you raising olives? Emmy! 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 George! Welcome home, my darling. Welcome home. Darling. Oh, my darling. In just a moment, an important message from Mr. Jory. It's mighty discouraging, isn't it, when no matter how careful you are, down you come with another annoying cold. Yes, these are cold-catching times. And when a cold strikes, it's no time to take needless chances with untried remedies. So don't ever experiment. Remember, the best-known home remedy you can use for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. At bedtime... Just rub Vicks VapoRub on your throat, chest, and back. And almost instantly, VapoRub's famous relief-giving action starts to work. And best of all, VapoRub's comforting action keeps on working for hours through the night. It invites restful sleep. And often, by morning, most of the misery of the cold is gone. So be sure you get Vicks VapoRub, the modern way so widely used to bring such grand relief from miseries of colds. Time-tested, home-proved, Vicks or up. This is Victor Jory. Your, your requests have been coming in in great numbers, and they've been very helpful to me in scheduling your future plays. For example, next week you will hear one of the finest plays ever written, the dramatic romance of Elizabeth the Queen by Maxwell Anderson. Very shortly, due to your many requests, we will bring you that great emotional love drama, Random Harvest. Please keep your requests coming in. It won't be long before we get around to your favorite play. Write me, please. Care of Columbia Broadcasting, 22, New York. Our play was adapted from the Paramount picture by Gene Holloway and directed by Richard Sandville. Paramount's latest success is the heartwarming story And Now Tomorrow with Loretta Young and Alan Ladd. The role of Emmy today was played by Betty Winkler. Victor Jory is currently co-starring with Miriam Hopkins in The Perfect Marriage. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to be with us again next week when Vic's the makers of Vicks VapoRub brings you the matinee theater production of Elizabeth the Queen, starring Victor Jory as Lord Essex. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.